Well, welcome to Come Knit With Me. And what we're going to do today, we're going to make a simple baby sweater. Yeah, I'm keeping them simple these days. And it's a drop shoulder that we're doing. I'm using Karen Yarn, Simply Soft. It is a, it says it's medium weight four. It's got four ounces. Now my pattern calls for 3.6 ounces. So I'm hoping I have enough. All right, so let us get started. I've got my row counter set to zero. And I'm getting my pattern up so I can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna extend 52 stitches. Okay, and each section is 15 stitches. So there's a 30. 40, 50, and 2. Okay, there's my 30. Forty. Fifty and two. And I'm, I am gonna double check. Okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten. 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 That one was extra. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 52. Okay. So I got them all forward. I am going to do a cast on with key plate 2.5. And so I got 2.5 in there. Keep plate two for the rib. I gotta fix that. Okay. I wanna leave enough so I can seam it together. Mm. Mm. I think because I'm unsure of the quantity, I'm gonna just do enough to tuck it in. Okay, I'm gonna get my latch tool in and I cast on the crochet cast on and you could do e-wrap I mean whichever one you're most comfortable with this is your sweater and like I said we're gonna do a drop shoulder and this will be this is part one so we're gonna do the back I'm hoping we'll do it from start to finish. But it's probably gonna have to be split up. <coughs> Excuse me. Now if I have any newbies out there for me, I do not edit my videos. <coughs> what you what I do is what you get. Mistakes and all. But I do show you how to, if I do something that causes an issue, I do show you how to fix it. Because I'm human. And I am not a perfect knitter. I do a lot of repairs. Well, not maybe a lot of repairs, but a few. Okay, now I'm going to use a ruler to push it back. Because it's a little bit longer. And I'm pushing it back. So that it is one thumb away from the retainer bar. And that puts it into the forward work position. Okay, and then I'm going to get my needle, my latch opener. And this is, actually, you could use a, a credit card cut in a triangle. Or almost anything that's got a triangle. I've got that. I also have this, which is just a piece of plastic with a triangle cut on the bottom. 
Okay, now we're going to cast on. Well, we did the cast on. We're going to knit the first row slowly. I'm doing it slowly. See how it's raising up a little bit there? Doing that so I don't lose any stitches, which I see I've lost one already. And then I need to hang my weights. And the way I hang my weights, I go to the end first. And here is a... Well, I dropped a stitch right off the get-go. Now, I have find, found that Karen yarn splits really easy, so be cautious with that. Okay, and just re-stitch it and hang your weight. I like extending the needles just a little bit so it can grab the work easier. I have a split yarn over here, so I'm going to unsplit it and hang the hook. Now that, oh, I've got two here. Just rehang the stitch and then the straight bar, the actual row. Oops. And then restitch. Okay, those. Oops, here's another one. That's what I get for talking when I'm doing the first row. Excuse me. Okay. Alright, now, the way I like putting my needles back on. I go to the middle first, and then I go to the middle of that, then to the middle of the other side, and that should be enough. Okay, so I'm going to need my glasses. I can't see my computer. Okay, so I need to stitch, do 10 rows, and convert to a one by one rib. Okay. So, got the first row. Okay, that's two. Three. over here. This needs a weight. The reason I know it needs a weight is because it bubbled up. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it bubbled up. So I'm just re-stitching the ones that bubbled. And I'm going to hang a weight in the middle between each of these. See how it's bubbling up here? That's what tells me that I need more weights. Now I'm gonna fix this one here. Okay. That noise was just one of my weights slipping. Okay. So I got row four.
Okay. Now I'm going to do a one by one ribbing and I set my latch tube down somewhere. Here it is. <coughs> okay, and let us get close so that Okay, and I want to right there. I want to know when I'm putting this so I know when I have to move the camera. Okay. Now you can do two couple ways. You can pop it. And then slide your hook into the first row, then release it. And then just ladder it up. You want to try to maintain the same pressure that the machine put on. Okay, now I do not like playing chase the, the work. So I am going to put Got the first one done. So I release that one. I want to be able to get to that bot, the first row. I'm working on being careful because I think I just split that stitch. <clears throat> no, I missed the stitch altogether. <coughs> Excuse me. See, now I can pull the, the work so I can see it and it's not going anywhere. Another way you could do it. Okay. Now you want to keep that on the machine while you release the stitch beside the stitch for the row that you want to work down. I'm not going to worry about that one. I pulled it too far forward, but I'll pick it up. Blowing it down. <coughs> Put 
poor color choice is my problem. But I like the purple, so. As you can see, they all pop down. They're not going to go anywhere. It's If it concerns you, what you can do is take some either bobby pins or hair pins. I have bobby pins here. And you can stick them right into the stitch until you're ready to use it. Locate your bottom. You want to take that pin out, ladder it down, I'll show you another way you could, well, there's several ways you can do it. These are just a few of the ways. Locate the bottom row, the first row that you knitted. Being careful not to split the yarn. I'm going to go off camera and finish this row. Well, yeah, finish. Oop, 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 oop. Make sure you stick it into the right place. And I'm going to go finish this rib and I will be back one or two before I finish. Okay, getting ready to do the last ribbed stitch. So I'll pick up that first, that first ladder and I just ladder back up. Rehang my weights. <coughs> and remove my rulers. And 
my pattern says to reset my row counter to zero. Okay, and then I am going to knit for 26 rows. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, row counter zero. I'm going to knit and almost forgot. Change my key plate to two. my key plates change to two and I'm going to knit my first row slow because I've got my weights on that row and gotta double check to make sure that your key plate is in the right position which means underneath the bars in the back now I have not a mess, but an inconvenience. I got all these stitches that are before or after, excuse me, the ladder, the latch, sorry. So I open put them into the forward work position with the latches open. And I knit the row. Yeah, this feels better. Now, if you find you having difficulty knitting the row, just put all of them in the fold work position and then knit. One. And I want 26 rows. I'm going to cast off three stitches for the next two rows. So I need my lash tool. I need a little bit of extra yarn. And I'm going to cast these off. Okay, so I move this one back one and knit it through. And then bring it over here. Knit the next one. Bring it back one. And knit it through. And that was two. And this is the third one. Okay, there's my three. I want to move my weight up a little. Now I will knit a row. And 
then I will decrease on the other end so that you can see what I'm doing. Let me see if I can get you a little closer. There we go. Okay, pull some extra yarn out. Oh, I'm at the wrong end. Sorry. There we go. So I am going to knit two stitches. Then I'm going to bring the second stitch back to the first. And knit it through. Then I'm going to move that stitch forward one. And that's decreasing one stitch. Okay, so I'm going to See how that's kind of rising up? I'm going to go ahead and put the weight on it. And I'm going to knit the next stitch. <coughs> Excuse me. And move it over. And I want it in front of the latch so that I can knit it through. And bring this one over one. And this is my third one. It'll be my last. I knit it through. And place this on the beginning, which is now the beginning stitch, without splitting it. Now that is the underarm, and now we're going to knit to row 52. Okay, and since that could easily be boring, I'll be back when I get to 52. Okay, I'm at row 52, and it says to move pattern says 10 stitches to waist yarn 26 the next 26 to the to waist yarn and the next 10 to waist yarn I'm a little on the lazy side I'm gonna put them all on the waist yarn and I use this nook with the string that comes with it and all I do and I want this yarn to get out stay out of the way so I'm just gonna hang it on to the weight. Okay, and the easiest way, push all the needles forward, put the hook into the loop, and remove this needle. Hook in the loop, remove needle. You just have to make sure that your the hook goes into the stitch. And one of the easier ways is to from behind, but be careful that you don't, like that one almost, you don't want to pull it off the machine because that'll mess you up. Okay, and just take them all off. And you can go move those back. We'll need them again when we do the front. Because this is just going to be a simple pullover with a double band for the neckline. Now if it starts getting a little heavy, just take off some of the weights and set them aside because you'll be using them again. I 
If you find your hook getting a little bit tight, just move it down. You're going to move it down onto the thread itself. That yellow thread that you saw. Now if you have needle stitch holders, go right ahead and use them. I have them, they're just buried right now. Okay, now all the weights are off. And now I want to finish taking these hooks, hooks, ha, stitches off the needles. Okay, I dropped one, so I picked it up with the crochet hook and dropped two. Let's fix that first. Okay, I dropped three. So let's hang it. Glad I didn't have any weights on. Rehang those. This stitch that's way down here by itself. You want to rehang that one. Now at this point I'm going to put, another, put the weight on it. And that other one that I dropped, I rehung it. So. Alright, get these out of the way. And just restitch these. This one I dropped two rows, so I need to restitch. There we go. Yep. Have to restitch these. And now I got these two that I have to research. Okay, and just stitch them through. And be careful you don't pull it off the yellow off the end. And now feed it. There we go. All the weights are off. Now you don't, I don't want to pull this through, so I want to leave it on the nook. Okay, and here is our back with all of them on. That's good. And there are a little photo of this. And again, this is the back. With the ribbing. And now I'm going to have to cut this thread. And this time I do want it at least the length of the sweater. There we go. And 
I'm going to set it aside. And we're going to get move on to part two. And I'll be back. Okay, I have 52 stitches extended. And I want to cast on 52 stitches. And I do it just a crochet cast on. I pull out enough out of my yarn so that it's just dangling. Okay, and we go. And 52. Okay, thread up my carriage. Make sure my latches are open. Okay, and I move my work into forward work position. <clears throat> Make sure my latches are open. Which one closed? And the rest are fine. I'm going to knit the first row slowly, and I've got these weights ready for me to hang. Now I'm going to knit it slowly so that I don't hopefully drop any stitches like I did on the first part. But again, that's no big deal. Just catch them back up. Okay. Oops, sorry about that one. So we're going to knit slowly. Okay. And hang it to either end. That's just how I do it, but I mean, you're welcome to do it however you see, however you're more comfortable with it, your sweater. And in half. Change the row back to zero, and I needed one row, so I've got to put this to one. Okay, now I am going to knit ten rows, and I forgot to change my key plate. So 
flip the key plate and knit 10 rows. There's my 10. And you want to convert to rib. Just like we did earlier. And I will be back when I get this done and ready to knit Oops. the body of the front up until the sleeve it's pretty much just like the back until you get to the neckline so I will be back okay I've got my front and knitted I am changing key plate to two changing my row counter to zero and now I am going to knit 26 rows then I'm going to do my cast stuff sorry about that one now I'm going to a couple here And I'll be back at 26. Okay, I got 26 knitted. Now I'm going to do the cast off. And I'm going to bring you in for that one. I'm going to bring a couple over here for extras and I'm going to knit first two stitches. I'm going to move the first stitch onto the second stitch and knit that second stitch through and I'm going to move that And I'm going to knit this third stitch and move the third stitch over and knit it through. Then I'm going to move this, that stitch over to the third, knit the next, bring this over back one, knit it through. The advantage of more than one tool. Okay, there's my three. Now I'm going to knit a row. I'm going to move this weight up because of that extended bit. Oops, wrong direction. Okay. Here we go. And then I'm going to cast off three on this side. So I'm knitting the first one, knitting the second one, 
moving the first one on top of the second one and knitting it through. Excuse me. And I'm going to move that stitch over one. Nope. <sighs> Knit the second one. Bring that one back one and knit it through. Move this over to the spaced. Knit the next one. Move this one back over to the first one and knit it through. Then move this one back over. And there's my three. Moving my weight up. And this is where it changes. Well, not by much. Let's see. I'm going to knit. To row 50. Gotta get rid of the empty stitches first. Okay. Seven. So now I'm going to get the center 22 to a stitch holder. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to use as a stitch holder is this little bit of orange yarn. I'm going to get out a needle. And I like the little chibi needles. So I'm threading my orange up. I'm going to locate the center. But see where my... Remember I did the 30 and 15 and 15, so that is my center. So I need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And those ten, two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. And two, four. Okay, I got thirteen on each side. And that's temporary. Okay. I'm going to remove these. Center. 20. Center 22. How many did I do? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, that's what I did wrong. And that one.
just slipping them from the needles onto my waist, my orange arm, using it as a stitch holder. I didn't use the, the nook, mainly because I got to finish up the sleeves and I wanted it in order, meaning I'm going to have to graft these ten these stitches I have left onto each shoulder. So on the back it's not a big deal because it's an even amount. Okay. Now at this point I'm going to remove some weights from the center because I don't need that much weight on them. I only need maybe one or two on each end. Even them up a little bit here. Now, so I don't lose them, I'm going to put a little bit of a knot in it. It's just a slip knot. Okay, now I'll put these in my marking position. Put these in forward working position. <clears throat> now, the sleeves are going to be straight up, so I don't have to do much with them. This we have to decrease <coughs> one stitch for the next two rows. Okay, so I'm going to move these three over one. I dropped the stitch, so I'm putting both stitches back on, and I'm going to knit through this one. By picking up that stitch, bringing it up and over. Okay, so there's my decrease. I've got the other side in forward non working position, so I'm going to knit a row. Then I'm going to decrease one more. And this is on the next side of it. I'm going to be careful not to lose any like I did earlier. Which I almost did again. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to knit that row. And that'll give me 52. Now these I want to move to stitch holder. So I'm going to take this apart. And I'm going to use this end to move them to the stitch holder. At this point, I'm going to take off those weights down here. I don't want any unnecessary weight put on the work. At this point, it's getting a little tight, so I'm just going to pull the thread through and finish on my way. All I'm doing is putting it in and lifting it up. Okay. I'm 
Now I'm going to cut it. Leaving a bit of a not much one, just a little bit. Basically enough to tie it in. Okay, now if you remember you start we started here. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, so we're gonna decrease one stitch. And I'm going to move these into forward work position with the latches open. And they're open. So I'm going to knit one row. I'm not going to worry about the counter because I'm only doing two rows. One. And then I am going to decrease one stitch. Okay, now I'm going to remove, I'm going to put a slight knot, I think it's they call it a half hitch, in there. Okay. And I'm going to trim that thread. And I'm going to take that orange yarn. And thread these onto the make my needle. Then we're going to set this aside. Now I don't want to pull it because it's still attached to the other end, remember? Take the weight off. Find that end. And I'm going to put in a little slip knot. Because I don't really want to lose it. Okay. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug, holding on to this up here. Tuck, 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 tuck. Okay. And there our front is with a little bit of a neckline. Okay. Next thing we're doing, we are going to be grafting. These ten. onto the back, which we'll be doing later. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let these set a bit. Well, welcome back to Come Knit With Me. And what we are going to do, we are gonna graft the front to the back at the shoulders. First thing you need to do is untie your knot. 
and kind of flatten it out with your hands and you find the spot where you went up a little bit. Okay, and there should be 10 stitches there. So pull the work flat. And I kind of push it a little bit so I can <coughs> hold it. And then do the same to the back. Now I have enough to graft it. I left a little bit of a leg, uh, yarn on one end. So I'm going to thread that. And it, it's kind of like the mattress stitch. But we're doing it flat rather than up. Okay, so hold your threads flat. Keep the yellow and the orange separate. And what you're going to do, you're going to go in on this side. Being careful not to grab the orange yarn and pull that out. Then we're going to go in the first one and out the second. And we're going to go in this one through the same way the way it went in and then into this one. In the, you've got a little bit of a loop there so you want to go in where this one came out the second one and then go next door and come across the street and you want to go in the direction that you came so it's like in the back door and out the front door. Okay, and you want to you want to keep the stitch, and this is what I'm calling the stitch, the same tension as your working stitch. Okay. So we want to go in the front door, across the street, and in the back door. You want to go in the front door, you want to come in the back door and across the street. In the front door next to your neighbors, across the street, in the, the back door of your neighbors. Same street, neighbor, front door. And we're going to go in that same door we came out of. Then you want to go next door. Then you want to go in the same door you came out of and go in next door. And you want to go in the same door you just came out of, then go in next door. You want to go in the same door you came out of and in the front door of the next door. I did that whole thing wrong. Let me take that out.
It's easy to work pad. That's why you look at what you're doing. And I think instead of the back door, I should be going in the front door. You're basically creating stitches. And it, if you're wondering why I'm taking it out, it ended up, oops, sorry about that. This ended up way in front, so. And I didn't want that. And if you, I like the one that's, doesn't have a point on it, but this one does. I just haven't located it yet. Okay. Let's try this again. Let's see. I'm trying to hold them flat. Excuse me. Now, if the threads are giving you trouble, just get closer. You can pull that other thread out if you want.
you want to make sure that your stitch is laying flat. In the same way you came out. If the frayed ends give you trouble, Wet your fingers. And re rewind it. And if that doesn't work, you can put a piece of tape on one end. You go in the way you came out. Go next door. Go in the one you came out of. Go next door. Okay, I'm on my last stitch. That should be ten. One, two, three, four, eight, nine. Ten. Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna leave that floating. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, but I'm not pulling it out of the rest of the work. I'm just pulling it out of that edge. I got one screw up right there. I'm going to go ahead and work with live stitches, so I'm taking this out. I'm not putting any stress on my stitch. You want to take it out one by one back to where you liked it. Now as long as you don't put any stress on the stitches, they'll be fine. If so not, you just get your hook out and restitch them.
Remember, no stress on the stitches. Okay, so it's came out that one. In on that one. Out on that one. You want to recreate the stitches. See how it's coming off the back? So we're going to go in the back. In the same and up the back in the same Now, if you've only got the pointy needle like I'm working with, and you don't like the pointy needle that I'm working with, just turn the needle around. And just be careful of the point. Make sure you get all the yarn.
Okay. One of the easy ways of, re of catching it, go through it, catch the stitch, and you're going to be pulling it through, so hold on to that. So, what I want to do is lay my I can take the needle off now and lay the work. I have a few I need to tighten up. Pulled the wrong one. Now this is the one I put the soft knot in, and I'm going to put a soft knot on these two. And on this one. Well, it's not going anywhere till I tuck it in. And there we go. I'm going to grab the other side. Which, this side I didn't leave any tail. So I'm going to take a bit of the yarn. It's only 10 inches, 10 stitches. So I'm taking just enough. Remember, I'm not sure if I even have enough. I have a real pretty purple out here that it's like about this color that I'm going to do if I don't have enough for the sleeves. Okay. This would work easier if I had blocked it. But that's one I haven't really learned yet, so. What I should have done is set these underneath a book or a um, clamp it to a ruler. So you find your first stitch. Sorry about that. And I'm going to go in end first because then it won't go into the I'm going to do a soft knot here. Okay, so I went in there and I want to go in and over. Pull it snug. <laughs> okay. I don't want to do this one just yet because I have to put it back on the machine and stitch this part. So I will be hanging from <coughs> here to 10 stitches short. Okay, so what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, and 10. I'm just going to stick my hook in and out. That way I know not to take that stitch. Okay. I'll be back and we'll do the collar. Okay. We are going to start the collar. And we'll be removing most of our excess threading. Okay, with the wrong side facing, you want to bring out 52 needles. Remember what I said, it's each section is 30. So that's 30. Might be 31. And so that leaves 10 and 50 and 1. Okay, 30. 40, 50, and 1. We are going to double check. Don't worry about that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. <coughs> 2, Four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. So that is ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty two. Okay. So bring them all forward. Open all the latches. Okay. Now, we're going to do this systematically. I like that word. With the wrong side facing. And you want to miss the first 10. So I'm, I'm working with the front piece because the 10 is easier to find. Okay, so we are going to where do they start in the middle? I hate that. Okay, they want us to start in the back. So I'm going to start well, I'm going to start here in the middle. And these I want, I'm going to just move these out of the way, get 26, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 20, 2, okay, push those back. Now, if I do not have enough, that is not a problem, meaning if I use more from one side than the other, that is not a problem. Okay. Now, get to your edge. You're going to rehang and try to rehang all in the same direction because you don't want to twist it. I'm avoiding the yellow. Going in from the side. And I'm just. I hang those four. Then I come over to this side. And see, I wrapped it around so I'd know where my 10 was. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you can do three at a time if you want, but I like having the control of the one. I just slip the tool in and hang it.
Now it's starting to bubble over there. Over here, so I'm going to go ahead and hang a weight. Down low so it's not in my way. Because I can change it later. I don't like playing chase the needles, that's why I put my blocker there. Because it keeps it about in the same spot. And it's starting to bubble again. So I put another weight there. I'll be moving them up when I get this on. And I'm using my fingers to push the stitch forward so I can grab it easier. out of the way and just move these all over one and get this this stitch I'm going to take this one right here which is one I'm supposed to take Okay, so that's all. Now I have to hang, what does it want? Two from the left neck edge. Okay. From the front, okay. So that these two over here get our soft in there and there's two right here one and two I'm gonna make sure this is tied good okay now they want us to do 22 stitches from the neck holder and that will be these up here so we want <coughs> excuse me that out of my way. Latches are open. Only this time I'm going to do it this way because I have these hanging here. Okay, if you can't, if the, the, the Stitch has gone falling down a little bit. Just grab both sides of the waist yarn and pull it back up. So you can grab it. Now you can take that out because there's nothing 
at the end holding it up. And that'll give you the opportunity to pull the stitch if you need it. Again, you can pull that orange out of there, not on the stitches you haven't put on yet, but the other stitches, the ones that you're working with. On and out, on and out. That one doesn't want to go on. <laughs> Give it a little bit of a pull and out. And out. Now this will leave me with ten. Should leave me with ten on the still on the orange thread. We're going to be crafting that when we get the collar done. And it's getting a little bit bubbly over here, so I'm putting a weight on it. You don't want a hole there, so. Anyway, you can do it also if you want. Come over here and load all these up onto the transfer tool. Sorry. And I'm just loading the I'm going to, I'm scrunching them down. It's kind of going to pull it a little bit, so. I'm going to go ahead and put these, I think there's three there. Let that hang a little. It's not going anywhere. Pull it so that the stitches is reformed in there. <laughs> I miscounted, but that's not picky. I didn't get very far. Okay. Now there, what's left is all on the needle. I'm holding the other end of the orange so that I can take it out. I 
I just want one to go on. So I'm using my latch tool as a pusher, which didn't work too well. I move over to the next stitch. So I'm just going to go in and over. And go ahead and remove this if you choose. I'm not doing it all at once because I want to make sure that I catch every stitch because um, sometimes I miss them. Now you can either do it like that, or hold it, and over. I love it when it matches. Okay, so now we just got the shoulder. already got that one. Okay, so I have 10 left on this side and 10 left on this side. Let me move you back just a little bit. Okay, so I should have 52 stitches hung. Missing one. Where did I not get that? Can I stitch it on? up there, pushing the work back, and let me see if I have to move my winder, nope, so now we are going to zero up my counter, and I'm going to work 10 rows, now this first row sometimes doesn't like getting worked, so what I'm going to do I'm going to put everything in the forward work position. That way I won't have any troubles. And yeah, I'm a little bit too far that way. But it'll work. Putting them into the forward work position. Double checking my latches. And now I am going to knit the first row. I don't need much of a tail, so we knit.
Okay, there's one and it didn't move. So now I need nine more. And I'll go ahead and do that offline. Just do a few at a time. And lighter them up. Now if you wanted to do this when you do this, if you don't aren't crazy about that stitch, what you can do is go in and pull that out. That makes an interesting stitch. I may do that on my next sweater. That's the mock fisherman. That's what I've been told. Okay, so I will be back when I get this done. Oops. I just didn't push the arm. Tried to put very little tension on it. Now what we're going to do afterwards, this top row, we're going to fasten to the bottom row. The pattern, I think, just says to sew it, but, I mean, we're going to end result sew it, but I think we're going to use the machine to do it. Okay, there we go. Bored you enough with the ribbing. I'll be back. Okay, now we're going to do the collar. So I'm going to remove my weights. I'm going to leave probably one or two on because what I want to do is rehang that first row of the collar. And I'm going to use, in this case, the yellow that I left. I'm going to pick up right where the yellow is, holding my finger down so it doesn't go Popeye on me. And just rehang it. And then I'm just going to do the, I forget what it's called, where I stitch back with a needle. Okay, now I'll be back. Oh, hang on, you want to see? There we go. I'm hanging one on each. I'm just grabbing the stitch and rehanging it. And I'm going to do that all the way down, and I'll be back when I get to the end. 
Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this old needle. I'm gonna cut at least twice the length of my work. I'm gonna pull out my scissors. As you see, I had to, well, okay, I did. I had to put on a few weights. Okay, so thread this up. And now what I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, this is coming from the back. <coughs> so I'm gonna go from the front to the back. from the back to the front. I'm gonna go in the back again. Skip this one and go in the back of this one. And So I'm going to go in the previous one, and I'm just doing this loose because I don't want the collar to be real tight. That's why I'm leaving it on the machine. Okay. In the back. In, into the front. Back one stitch. Forward one stitch. Okay, and back one stitch. I'm doing my best not to split the yarn, which is why I'm not using a very sharp darning needle, yarn needle. Go in the back. And out the front. Okay, now I'm going to do that all the way down. And when I come back, I'll take it off the machine. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I've finished going across, and I'm just gonna do it, take it off the easy way by pushing it back. So that all the stitches, which is going to be a little bit tight because you get two plus the stitches on the needles. And I like doing, using my handy ruler. And I'm just pulling it off. I'm not pulling it you know, like ripping it off because I don't know if anything's going to get caught. Another way you could do it, you could push it that way, but I find that's a hard, a little bit harder.
And there's our little bitty collar. You have to do some tugging. Probably the easier way to reshape them is stick your tool in and go tug tug. Tug. Yeah. See now that looks a little better. Okay, so here is the beginning of the sweater. Let's go back up a little bit. And there's the beginning of the sweater. We still got the sleeves to put on. And I'm only going to film one. Because you do the exact same thing for both. But that'll go here. We'll, put, we'll rehang these. And then we'll continue. I'll be back at that point. Okay. Now we're going to graft our stitches from our collar, our shoulder, onto 10 stitches. Let's get you a little closer. Okay. Now I want it, I'm going to end up with it right sides together. So the first one I put on is going to be the right side facing me. Let's forget. There's that one and this one I want I think. I wanted to stay still, so the weight of the work should be enough to hold the work down. Now, if you want, you can seam the neck here, the collar, while you're at it. But I'm gonna—I want to do it afterwards because I'm just gonna do it like an um, mattress stitch. I think that's going to be enough. So then we take the other collar, and this is on the nasty uh, orange stuff. So just make sure that you rehang. Watch out for this short guy. I cut him too short. Now that thing wants to grow on me. So. So it doesn't grow up and out. I'm putting a document clip on it. Now you can slip all these onto the transfer tool first. But this morning I'm lazy. You want to make sure you do not catch your thread going across. In this case it's orange. Got some other stuff I want to try next time. It's more like that yellow but it's white. That one wants to be a pain so I'm going to use the hook. I didn't want to use the hook, I could.
could. Just grab these two. And pull up. Okay, now I can take the orange off. And the yellow. In there, I know I lost. Okay, so now I want to push all this work, the empty needles, back. Don't need to worry about the row count this morning. But I need a Nope. Nope. I want to go three times the length. Okay, and excuse me. Then I want my needle. So I've got two stitches, almost. I don't know why I cut that so short. Stitch came off, so I just had to recreate it. I'm looking for something to hold on to that little piece of yarn. Just my toolbox. It's a mini two tray storage box. Okay. That particular document clip has glue on it, and old glue. So I'm figuring it's rough enough it can it will hold it. Okay, now what I put my needle. Stick one. Should I get for not putting stuff away? Okay. Thread your needle. And remember when we did the previous grafting? Go in and out, next door neighbor, go in and out. We're going to do the same thing. I'm holding, got my finger between the two, so I can see what I'm doing. 
I'm going to go come in from the back, cross the street, Now, what I'm going to do is do a soft tie, half, I believe it's called half hitch, on this. You know, it's going to need a full hitch. Okay. Let me get you in a better angle. Let me see a little better what I'm doing. I hope. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to hold these. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to hold those little bits of yarn with my fingers for now. Okay, so I came in that neighbor. So I want to come into this neighbor and go diagonally across the street. Okay, then I'm going to come in the next door neighbor straight across. Now you want to try to keep the stitches. Huh. This one didn't stay stuck. So what I'm doing, I'm just picking up the stitch that didn't stay stitched and pulling it down. in my next door neighbor across the street at an angle then their next door neighbor across the street direct direct across then my next that next door neighbor You want to make sure you go in the stitch, not the loop that you created. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to go to that next door neighbor. Let me try a different angle altogether.
Okay, now I got you situated, I hope. Okay, so I'm going to go in the next door neighbor, right across the street. Then my next door neighbor, across the street at an angle. Making sure I'm picking up the stitch, not the loop I'm creating. Hang on a minute, let me show you better. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to go next door to that stitch. I'm going to come across the street, back in the house I came from originally, go next door, and I'm going to go across the street at an angle, diagonal. You want to make sure that you get the stitch, not the one that you just created. next door come back across the street straight across go next door trying not to split the yarn if you have any troubles like I'm having now just use your latch tool to kind of pull it down and open it up a little bit. Yeah. And the neighbor and across the street. And the neighbor Now, if you can't grab the stitch when you do coming back, just take it out, stitch it through. I'm wiggling it down, so I'm making a stitch a little longer. And then I'm running the needle Oh, hooked up too fast. Beside running the needle, this needle beside the hook. Okay, next door neighbor. Cross the street at an angle. Next door neighbor. Cross the street at an angle. Next door neighbor. Cross the street at an angle. Next door neighbor. Cross the street. Yeah, straight across. All right. In the next door neighbor at an angle. You can see when you're trying to decide which is the stitch. Little too close. <clears throat> you see this bar here? That's the stitch you created. 
see this one in the opposite direction? That's the original one from the shoulder. That's the one you want to go through. So in and across the street. Now because you're at the end, think of it like a cul-de-sac. So you just go in across the street. And these will be tied off. I'm going to do this part. This part by hand, that's the collar. Okay. So I can set this down. And take it off. And I usually just either pull it off or take Sorry about that. Or take one at a time. And if I did it right, huh, I did. I love it. It'll look like that. Cool. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. Upon closer inspection, the stitches are a little bit elongated. So what I want to do, I want to tighten it up a little bit. I'm just hooking it over my finger. And this is the part I'm going to be pulling. Okay, well, I'm going to be pulling it towards that direction. Okay, and it's easy to do the pulling with the transfer tool. Now what you want to do, you want to follow that thread so you get the correct one. And go to the next one. Now I'm just gently pulling on it. Then go on to the next one. And pull on it and hold it down with my finger. Go to the next stitch. Hold it down. Go to the next stitch. Oops. There we go. I keep forgetting there's one in between that one. And the stitches should virtually disappear. Well, in this case, you know where they're at because I'm joining it to a darker color. But if they were the same color, they would virtually disappear. So you want right sides facing. So you put the first side on the machine and then you want to with the right side out hmm I gotta split here let's see if I can fix it 
I'm just going to snip it. It's just one strand. There we go. You see, they, they blend right into each other. Okay, now, oh boy, we have a lot of ends to tie in. Now we are going to hang the sweater. Wrong side facing. You're going to find the shoulders. No. You're going to find the underarms. Sorry about that. And you're going to hang up. Leaves. We are going to, as it says, graft onto the body of the sweater. How many? 44 needles. Okay, let's clean up a little bit. Don't need our scissors just yet. <coughs> now remember, 44 stitches. So that is 30. Excuse me, 15 from which is one section, and then another section. Then we need so that's 30, we need 14 more. So we have seven on one side. And there it is. And seven on the other side. Three, four, six. So all right, so we hang. Stitch from the corner. Okay. We want to hang wrong side facing you. Take the first stitch and hang that one. Then you take the last stitch. Hang that one. Now what I do is I take the center stitch and hang it about in the middle. Which is right about here. Then I go to the center of that drape. And hang that one. Center. And hang. Center, about center. And hang. And I'm just going to fit it on there. Oh, 
trying to do the same thing. Now I will be back when these are all rehung. Okay. I'm all hung up. It needs a little bit of weight. And because I know this is going to be a little bit on the tough side to stitch, I am going to lose my brain. I'm going to push all the weight stitches behind the latches. I'm going to push them all to forward work position and making sure my latches are all open. Thread my machine. Reset my counter. And pull out my pattern. I have my pattern on my phone because I can do this to it, make it bigger. Okay, grafted on. Knit the first row with key plate 2.5. What I got. Then we're going to work even for three rows. Then, okay, let's do one step at a time. All right, so we're going to knit the first row. does not like any tension on your yarn. I'm kind of rocking it to get it through. Okay, now I did notice one stitch didn't stitch. No worries. Just rehang it and restitch it. Oh, here's another one. Rehang it. Doesn't want to get picked up. There we go. And now the stitch. And stitch it. Aha, uh -huh, I popped it off. That's what happened here. Okay. And it said we're going to work even for three rows. So that was one. That was three. I know it didn't clip because even numbers are on this side. Okay, then we're going to decrease one stitch at each end of every third row. So I'm going to decrease one stitch. Now 
each end. Every third row, okay? Okay, so row three, row six, and row nine will get a decrease. Row six is on the right. So I move these over one. Okay, so do this decrease. Okay, then I read that wrong. It's every, yeah, every third row four times, so I got one more set to do, because so there's only three times. Okay, we do that one more time. Okay, sorry about that, and then every fourth row, four times, so we're at 12, so 12, 16, 20, and 24, so we'll be at 24. or 28 stitches. Okay, so we did that decrease, we did that decrease. Okay, now this time we're doing every fourth row. Okay. Okay. I think my stitches came up. Oh yeah. Gotta make sure your needles stay down in non-working position. Okay. Now I'm one ahead of myself because I had to backtrack. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this to two. One, two, three, four, yep, and decrease. One, and decrease one.
Get my needles out of the way. Now I need to go to 28 stitches. So half of 28 is 14. So I'm going to do 14 on either side of my so right here is my center, so I got two, I got four, brain drain. So, two, four, six, seven, right there. I'm just grabbing a marker. Center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I should have twenty-eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fifteen. Hmm. Fifteen. Brain fart here. Get the center, so it's two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, twenty, two, four, six, eight. So it is five from the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so those are the last stitches. Okay, push all them back. And one. Okay, I'm doing a simple cast off and then I'm going to take it off the machine and then we get to put that side together. Now I'm not filming the other side, the other, um, because that's all I have. So. And I figure you can just replay the sleeve portion when you go to do that one. And what I do to sew up the sides, you can do on the other side. And if I can't find another color, I may just take this sleeve out and make a light purple sleeve. And then do the cuff in this color. Sometimes you got to work with what you got. That's a lesson. If you just about have enough to finish it, you don't have enough to finish it. So ensure yourself always get one skein extra. And if you don't use it, you can take it back. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's what my husband says. Okay, I don't need that much. I'm going to go a little bit more. Now, I might be able to get enough of the sleeve in this color 
if I take apart my swatch. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try. Okay, I got the last stitch done, and I'm going to take my weights off. Take my markers out. And remove my ruler. Now you can take it off two ways. Push it and then pull it. Or just lift it. Okay? But if you just lift it, I mean, that's not a problem. You just make sure that you push your needles back out of the way so you don't get caught by them. Okay. They give it a little bit of tug. And there is, oops, wrong way. And there is my sleeve. So I'm going to use the mattress stitch and seam it there and there. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to come up to the neck and attach that. Okay, let me get my tools and then we'll get started. I'll be right back. All right, we're getting ready to seam our little sweater together. I'm gonna start with my long um, tail here. And now what I wanna do, I wanna make sure that my seams, my underarm seams, don't grow on me. So I'm going to put a little marker right there. Okay, now these, and I'm just going to look at these. Okay. Now you can block this before you even use the pieces, but I'm not much on blocking. Okay, thread, needle, and again, I don't have my shovy that I like. I've been looking for it, but I set it down somewhere. Okay, and the way I do it, when I'm on the rib, I just go in and over and then in there we go and over snug up then in and over. So it kind of creates a um, a rib stitch. And and over. And the last stitch on your rib. Well, give me one more. Okay. Now I I fix, I fix my fingers so that I can hold it. With my finger. And I'm going to do the Oops, the mattress stitch, which what the mattress stitch is, you go in, the first stitch you're going into, and out. Snug it up, not real tight, you want to keep the same 
tension. And you're going to go in the stitch across the way. Pick up one stitch of the above row. Snug it. And then you want to go in the same hole you just came out of. And just pick up one bar. And again, you want to go in the same hole you came out of. And pick up one bar. Repeat. In the same stitch. Pick up a bar. Across the street, if you want to think of it that way. Pick up one bar. And you just repeat that all the way down. Now when I get closer to my sleeve, with the bottom of my sleeve, I will remove my pin. That's just a guide for me to make sure I don't add stitches or take away. Okay, I will be back when it's done. And, well, when this part's done, then we'll do, do the uh, sleeve. Collar, not sleeve, collar. Alright, thank you. Okay, we're going to do the collar. I've got two long pieces, and that's what I'm going to be using to put it together. Now, this here needs to be tightened up a bit. I don't know which stitch it for, which, but I'm going to just bring it up a little bit and put it this way. I'm just doing a mini kind of sort of like <laughs> grafting just to connect these two. And to reinforce them. Okay, now I've got, excuse me, I've got up and down. And I like doing them separate. And I'm going to do the mattress. Stitch on this one. I'm not going to pull the stitches real tight because it is a neck, and I want it. I want the bait, the little one, to be able to get it on over their head without causing discomfort. I want to go to the inside. You can continue with the mattress stitch, which is what I'm planning on doing, or just overlap it. Oops. Sorry about that. Now, I've found that the way I put it together, I get this ridge, and it pushes it down. I'm going to see if I can't correct that by just, not every stitch. Not sure it will, but 
No. If I press it, it, it should. So let's see what it looks like. And it's, it's a sleeve, one sleeve. So I can't exactly dress the doll. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now let's see if it'll go over the little one's head. Oh yeah. It goes over good. My husband's gonna see if he can't find some more yarn this color. But you can see a little bit about what it looks like. Okay. Use your imagination for that half. And I'm calling this done because you're going to finish the sleeve using the same pattern we used for here. Then you're going to seam the under the arm and the side the same as we did here. Okay? Now if you want to do it, oh that other stuff's okay. That's okay. Kind of hugs the neck. Okay. So, hope you have fun doing this. I'm going to put the pattern, as soon as I finish with it, down in the bottom of the, down below.